Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving into 10 incredible events happening in Vancouver, BC. A city so beautiful, it makes you want to wear flannel and grow a polite beard, even if you're a baby. From the roar of the sports stadium to the quiet whispers of an art gallery, Vancouver's got it all. So grab a double-double, settle in, and let's explore what makes this city so darn exciting. Let's get started. The energy in BC Place was electric. The Vancouver Whitecaps were taking on their rivals. And let me tell you, these fans take their soccer seriously. The first half was a nail-biter. Back and forth like a heated badminton match played with a grapefruit. Close calls, near misses, enough tension to power a small hydroelectric dam. The crowd was on the edge of their seats, some literally spilling their popcorn. Then the second half. More intensity, more drama, more of that guy behind me yelling, offside! The white caps started to gain momentum, their passes crisper than a freshly ironed shirt. And then, with minutes left on the clock, magic. A beautiful play, a perfect pass, and bam, goal! The crowd erupted like a volcano of pure joy. The final whistle blew, and the white caps had done it. Victory! The stadium was a sea of cheering fans, high-fiving strangers, and hugging like they just won the lottery. It was a moment of pure, unadulterated sports bliss. That's Vancouver. Okay, buckle up, because things are about to get municipal. We're heading to a Vancouver City Council meeting where the fate of bike lanes and pothole repairs hangs in the balance. The room was packed, concerned citizens, local activists, and politicians in impeccably tailored suits. The air was thick with anticipation and maybe a hint of desperation. After all, these are the decisions that shape the city. First up housing affordability. Passionate arguments flew back and forth like a flock of pigeons fighting over a discarded bagel. Next, on the agenda climate change initiatives. This one got even more heated. You could practically see the sparks flying between opposing viewpoints. But amidst all the debate, there was a sense of community. People from all walks of life coming together to discuss the issues that matter most. It was democracy in action, folks. So next time you see a notice for a city council meeting, don't just toss it in the recycling bin. Go, participate. Hold on to your hats, folks, because election season is upon us. And in Vancouver, that means rallies, speeches, and enough campaign promises to fill a Stanley Park totem pole. Today, we're at a campaign rally for the BC provincial election. The energy is palpable. Supporters waving signs, chanting slogans, and generally looking like they're having a much better time than I am at the DMV. The candidate takes the stage, radiating charisma and perfectly coiffed hair. The crowd goes wild. The speech begins. Promises of better health care, improved education, and a stronger economy. Inspiring, uplifting, and vaguely familiar. The crowd hangs on every word, cheering, applauding, and occasionally booing at the mention of the opposing party. It's a spectacle, a performance, a reminder that democracy, while sometimes messy, is also incredibly entertaining. So even if you're not a political junkie, I encourage you to get involved. Because at the end of the day, it's our future we're talking about. Calling all cinephiles, it's time for the Vancouver International Film Festival, or VIF. Find independent films, foreign cinema, and thought-provoking documentaries. The festival atmosphere is buzzing. People discussing the latest screenings and French New Wave cinema. I caught a quirky Icelandic comedy about a sheep farmer who clones himself. After the film, there was a quanda with the director. That's the beauty of VIF. It's a chance to discover new films and pretend you're a sophisticated critic. So grab your tickets and get ready for a cinematic adventure. Get ready to strum your air guitar and tap your feet because it's time for the Vancouver Folk Music Festival. This is where banjos reign supreme, harmonicas wail, and beards are considered a fashion statement. The festival grounds are alive with music, stages big and small, showcasing local and international folk artists. It's a symphony of acoustic guitars, fiddles, and the occasional didgeridoo. I wandered from stage to stage, soaking up the sounds and trying to blend in with the crowd of tie-dye shirts and Birkenstocks. I even attempted a folk dance. It wasn't pretty, but that's the spirit of the folk fest. It's about community, about celebrating music, and about embracing your inner hippie, even if you secretly prefer heavy metal. So grab your banjo or your air guitar, put on your flower crown, and get ready for a weekend of musical bliss. Just try not to step on anyone's bare feet. 
Calling all foodies, it's time for the Granville Island Public Market Summer Fest. This is where you'll find fresh produce, local crafts, and enough delicious food to feed a small army. The market is bustling with activity, vendors hawking their wares, street performers entertaining the crowds, and the aroma of freshly baked goods filling the air. It's sensory overload in the best possible way. I sampled everything from artisanal cheeses to locally roasted coffee. I even tried a deep fried pickle. Don't judge me. It was surprisingly delicious. After stuffing myself silly, I wandered through the craft stalls, admiring the handmade jewelry, pottery, and other unique creations. I even bought a small hand-carved wooden bear. But that's the charm of Granville Island. It's a place where you can discover local treasures, support local businesses, and indulge in some serious retail therapy, even if your wallet cries a little. So grab your appetite, bring your wallet, and get ready for a day of sensory delights. Just try not to spend all your money on maple syrup. Get ready to celebrate love, acceptance, and all things fabulous because it's time for the Vancouver Pride Parade. This is where rainbows reign supreme, glitter is considered a food group, and everyone is welcome. The streets are alive with color, floats adorned with glitter and feathers, marchers dressed in outrageous costumes and music so loud, you can feel it in your bones. It's a party, a protest, and a celebration all rolled into one. I joined the throngs of people lining the streets, cheering, waving flags, and generally feeling the love. The atmosphere was electric, a sense of unity, of pride, of belonging. It was a reminder that love is love and that everyone deserves to be celebrated for who they are. The Pride Parade is a powerful display of solidarity, a celebration of diversity, and a reminder that we're all in this together. So grab your rainbow flag, put on your glitteriest outfit, and get ready to celebrate love in all its forms. Just try not to get too much glitter in your eyes. Calling all science nerds, it's time for Science World's interactive exhibit launch. This is where you'll find mind-bending exhibits, hands-on activities, and enough science to make your head spin. The exhibit hall is buzzing with excitement, kids running around, pushing buttons, pulling levers, and generally having a blast. It's like a giant playground for the intellectually curious. I explored the exhibits, learning about renewable energy, the human body, and the mysteries of the universe. I even tried to build a bridge out of spaghetti. It didn't go well, but that's the beauty of Science World. It's a place where you can learn, explore, and discover the wonders of science, even if you accidentally set off the fire alarm. Science World is a fantastic resource for families, students, and anyone who's curious about the world around them. So grab your lab coat, optional, put on your thinking cap, and get ready for a day of scientific discovery. Just try not to break anything. Dive into the depths of the ocean at the Vancouver Aquarium's Conservation Program event. This is where you'll encounter fascinating marine life, learn about ocean conservation, and maybe even get splashed by a playful sea otter. The aquarium is teeming with life, fish of all shapes and sizes, jellyfish that look like alien creatures, and a giant Pacific octopus that seems to be staring into my soul. It's mesmerizing. I explored the exhibits, learning about the importance of marine conservation, the threats facing our oceans, and the efforts being made to protect these fragile ecosystems. I even touched a starfish. It felt surprisingly slimy. After my aquatic adventure, I attended a presentation on ocean pollution. It was sobering, but also inspiring. It reminded me of the importance of taking action to protect our planet. The Vancouver Aquarium is a fantastic resource for learning about marine life and the importance of ocean conservation. So grab your snorkel, optional, put on your wetsuit, definitely optional, and get ready for a day of aquatic exploration. Prepare to be inspired at the East Side Culture Crawl. Local artists open their studios, showcasing their work and giving you a glimpse into the vibrant Vancouver art scene. The streets are alive with creativity, studios overflowing with paintings, sculptures, and photography. It's a feast for the senses. I wandered from studio to studio, admiring the diverse range of artistic expression. I even attempted to strike up a conversation with a sculptor. He just stared at me. But that's the beauty of the culture crawl. It's a chance to connect with local artists and discover new talent. The Eastside Culture Crawl is a celebration of art and a reminder of the power of creativity. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this whirlwind tour of Vancouver's most exciting events. From sports to politics to arts and culture, 
this city truly has something for everyone. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more updates on exciting events in Vancouver. And be sure to let me know which event you're most excited to check out.